Um, I think I'll keep this one relatively short and sweet. Firstly, Michael Oliver, just do one. Like, how do you get booked for Descent twice in the exact same moment? Like, it's surely one Descent. You really sending him off for throwing his arms up that you've given him a yellow card? Like, to me, that just screams another attempt at a Liverpool screw job, just like the Jordan Ayew incident last week against Crystal Palace. Secondly, where the hell has Varane been? Where the hell has Varane been? All these games, he sat on the bench and we've had to watch Maguire and Lindelof. You know, Lindelof and Shaw, Maguire and Shaw. But where's Varane been? He was absolute class. Absolute class. And so was Johnny Evans. I'm not going to take anything away from Johnny Evans. Johnny Evans was marking the striker. Varane was picking up the loose ball. Between the pair of them, absolutely immaculate. Absolutely immaculate. A phenomenal defensive display for Manchester United. Led by those two experienced players at the back. Exactly what you expect from big players in big games. And like I say, considering the fact that Johnny Evans had no football club no less than six months ago, to go into a game at Anfield for a Manchester United side, low on confidence, low on mentality, low on momentum, to produce a performance like that, fantastic work, Johnny Evans. And again, Raphael Varane, why has he not been playing? Outside of that... Can I say I'm a little bit disappointed we didn't nick it? I think I have the right to say that. Garnacho has to do better in his chance when he's one-on-one. -on -one. He allows Trent to get back at him. All he has to do is take one step across him. And Trent's only options are to hack him down and give us a penalty. Or he lets Garnacho shoot and hope Allison saves it. And Rasmus. Rasmus. Your big chance. Your first one-on-one. -on -one. Yes, it was on your weak foot. But big game players have to score those chances. And unfortunately, Rasmus... He's not had a lot of kicks of the ball in the last couple of games. And look, you've got to look at the fact he's been up against Uffman Kano and Kim Min Jae. And then for pretty much 95% of today's game, he was up against Van Dijk. But when your chances come, you have to take them. So I'm not going to say I'm disappointed in Hoyland. It's just, it's gutting. It's just like, oh, come on. Could you imagine if he'd have nicked that chance? But... Look, I, I can't sit here with too many complaints today. Everyone was expecting it to be another thrashing. Obviously, I went for 3-0 because off the back of the Bayern Munich performance, I thought we'd be able to show some resilience. And look, I, 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 like I said, I think defensively we were absolutely sound. I think on the ball we could have been a little bit better, but I don't think we could have been a lot better. I think Mainu was absolutely phenomenal. I thought Ten Hag had thrown the game away when he took Mainu off and put McTominay back in midfield because it was quite obvious the moment that decision was made Liverpool got back on top again but we did enough and we held on but I was again really impressed with Kobe Mainu he needs to start playing every single game from the start Amrabat a little bit inconsistent decent enough defensively still not convinced by him on the ball and then McTominay I thought it was a poor performance from him he did show his leadership qualities as I've said for a few months now a couple of years even, I think McTominay should be Manchester United captain anyway. He showed a good leadership, but again, on the ball, left a lot to be desired. And obviously, if it was Bruno in that position, you'd make the argument that possibly we would have had a little bit more control in the midfield. But up until that last minute of madness where Dallow got booked for two bits of descent in the space of 10 seconds, there was no whinging. There was no whinging from any of the players. No refereeing decisions where the players were flinging their arms up in the air moaning and this is my point about Bruno being captain he makes the rest of the team toxic and today the team wasn't toxic because when the ball went out of play when things were happening McTominay was motivating he was driving forcing and then Anthony rather than moaning was then trying to motivate as well every time the ball went out near the fans Anthony was giving it the big one Dallow again other than when he got sent off at the very end he was fantastic Best defensive display I've seen from Diogo Dallo. I was really worried for him going into this game against Luis Diaz, who I rate very, very highly. And I was surprised Aaron Wan-Bissaka wasn't in the starting lineup with that in mind. But again, defensively, Diogo Dallo, solid. And until the 93rd minute, kept his head in straight, which is something he doesn't do very often either. So, yeah, like I say, a massive point for us. A big result needed for Eric Ten Hag. We have to look to how we can improve a little bit more going forward. Like I say, Anthony was threatening at times, but again, he's just that little bit too predictable coming on his left foot. I thought Garnacho could have done a lot better today. I personally would have been brought on Rashford a little bit earlier. He definitely seemed to do more damage the 20 minutes he was on the pitch than what Garnacho did in the first 70. But again, it, it, at the risk of you know sounding like a broken record, it's a result to build on. And that's what we need right now. A decent display against Bayern Munich where we were outclassed, followed by a decent performance against Liverpool 
where we've quite literally kept the side at the top of the Premier League table to a goalless draw in a ground where we lost 7-0 last year with arguably a better starting eleven on the pitch. So I can't complain about that. Again, barring one moment of madness towards the end, I thought Onana played really, really well. His passing was good. His shot stopping was good. It was just that one little flap at the end. I suppose the last thing I should mention is the penalty shout. Um, I've seen him given. I will say that there was a little bit of worry in the house that that was going to get given. But you heard it on the commentary. It comes off his leg first, onto his hand, which under the rules of the game immediately means it's not handball. So... Obviously, no complaints from me. If it had been at the other end, maybe I'd be making a little bit more of an, oh, we should have had a penalty, whatever. But rule state, off the body, onto the hand, not a penalty. Therefore, not a penalty. So, yeah, we walk away with a nil-nil draw. We look ahead to another tough set of fixtures. I think we've got Aston Villa and West Ham coming up over the course of the next few days. So, they're not going to be easy as well. They're obviously two teams on varied form. Villa, of course, are absolutely flying. West Ham played really well today and won 3-0. So, they're not going to be easy games, but again, something to build on. Varane back in the team makes a difference. Mainu in the team makes a difference. Interesting to see who comes out of the team for Bruno Fernandes next week. For me, it's McTominay. Interested to see if Rashford comes back into the team next week. But overall, I'll take a point at Anfield. Let me know all your thoughts down in the comments. I'll see you very soon.